In this game right here, I'm going to be showing you how, as a pause 5 hard support, you can have the highest GPM, the highest hero damage, all while buying the wards. It is possible, and you're going to figure out how to do it here in this video today. Your team does not deserve your support. But holy crap, do they need it! At GameLeap.com, we have hundreds of guides teaching you how the best support players in Dota secretly carry their games with awful teammates without them even knowing it. Start your climb through ranked as the hero of your team today by hitting the discount link to our special offer in the description down below. So the first thing that comes into this uh, as a support is the ability to lane properly. Now, this is a solo lane against a uh, Void, right? I'm with the Jug, the, the Void is solo. So how do I approach this for the most part early on? It's very important that you zone them off the first wave. Even if he does theoretically trade with me decently 1v1, um, I don't think he trades that that well. So I'm just basically going to keep him at his tier 1 and check the Jug if he's pushing the lane, right? I'm looking at the lane equilibrium. You see me bouncing back and forth. And that tells me, is the lane pushing? And what do I need to react to? Now, the second part is, okay, the wave's pushing in. I don't want to aggro it, right? I want to let it go. So, I let it go past me, and I do this nice little loop around the trees and continue to hunt uh, the faceless void. Now, let's look at this situation, right? This is very important for all your support players. You should always do this, especially around the one minute mark, right? Because around the one minute mark, the pull camp spawns. So you should be specifically looking at the creep wave saying, can I pull here? It's that simple. So, I see a double range creep in three melee to the two melee and one range creep. Meaning, my only priority is to pull. Right? That's how I see that. And I'm going to single pull because I know the lane is pushing. If the lane wasn't pushing, I would stack the camp. That's how I like to look at it. So you notice, like, it's really... I, I don't do too much. You notice I'm playing Lina, right? So Lina is a hero that naturally does not dominate the lane until, you know, you're level 2 when you really start trading more effectively, right? Especially against a hero like Void. I'm going to cast my stun, hit him a few times, and he's just going to time walk it off, right? Void is naturally also a 4 armor hero with super high damage and good movement speed. So it's not too, too realistic for me to win this lane strictly through uh, actually just hitting the Void. But you notice if we look at the Void's level compared to my Juggernaut, it's not even close. And this is strictly off the fact that I've denied probably a full creep wave by now. That's, it's, that's it. And denying full creep waves is the best way to zone people, right? It's simply the best way to zone people. But once I'm done pulling, this is the other half to laning. Once I'm done pulling, I'm going to look to cast my spells in any way possible. So you notice I hit them. I realize, you know, I'm close to tower so I can make this trade. I'm deciding on my target. And then we hit our stun. And now it's a pretty decent trade for us, right? So it's very much about like, in order to win the laning stage, it's two things. It's pulling at the proper times, zoning early on. But most importantly, once you're done with this pulling in early zone, bouncing from the pull camp back to the lane and casting your spells. And I know that sounds simple, right? But you'll often look at your replays, especially if you do, and you'll be like, okay, maybe I actually don't cast my spells as much as I thought. Maybe I'm actually holding my stun online for way too long. And that's a good example because it's a low commitment spell, right? This is only 100 mana for me. Well, now it's 110 with level 2. But these type of spells need to be spammed strictly to win the lane. It's that simple but is not applied in the most games. Now you might be wondering at this point, how in the world do I end up with the highest GPM, nearly the highest net worth, with a free farming jug and only 10 last hits at 5 minutes? That's a good question and that's what we'll be looking at and it's really more about the mid game that I like to focus on here because typically for supporting videos, I really like to prefer looking at the laning stage because I do think it's so crucial. You notice just my impact in this lane allows me to be level 4, which is pretty significant, uh, by basically the 6 minute mark, even earlier at this point. So that's fantastic, and my Juggernaut is level 5 now, also at the 5 minute mark, compared to the 4 of Void. Plus, you have to take into consideration that their Grimstroke is 2, making this even a bigger gap. So in general, I really do think the lane means so, so, so much. But then again, there's a whole other aspect of Dota, which we're going to completely break down. Okay, the first thing I want to do is look at what I do when I'm dead. And I know this isn't exactly skipping to the mid game yet. We're going to get to the 8-9 minute mark soon. But whenever you die, this is your best time to start doing things, right? So first thing you want to do is obviously buy items, right? Buying items is super, super important. But it's also important to check the lanes. So you notice I check mid now. I have two seconds to respawn. I can check mid and be like, okay, is this who's killable? So I see he's level 6. And that means my pugna is also level 6, right? I mean, I checked the scoreboard. If needed, right? But I uh, I assumed he's level 6. So I decided to make a rap play on mid. Not only that, I want to get my 5 minute nighttime ward up. I know it's 6.30, but the idea is still there. It's still a good ward to get up for runes for my pugna. I even placed two wards. That one was maybe a bit foolish. But 
we pick up a kill on the Zeus. And that's strictly because I see, okay, there's a Zeus mid. I identify this is a hero I can kill. And I understand that my Pugna is level 6, which gives me a lot more kill potential. So being dead is actually like the best time to do stuff. Okay, so upcoming here, I just died. Right, I'm 2-3, and three, actually like sort of dying a lot this game. But what is important to note, and this is the cornerstone, literally everything. This is almost everything. This this concept is everything to become the highest GPM hero as a pause 5. Right, I take the tome, I level almost 7, and I go mid. It's that simple. My Pugna is rotating, correct? Pugna is top pressuring the tower, and a lot of mids do this. They rotate. So don't say, oh, it's a Pugna, you know, this is just a one-time thing. No, no, no. This is most games, a lot of games. It will be your safe laner leaving, it will be your mid laner, it doesn't matter, off laner leaving their lane. And because I'm weak, uh, you know, I do have Laguna Blade and I could have impact, but because I'd rather, you know, get to my Aether Lands, you know, Mana Boots, even scale later on, be able to, you know, get to other items as well, because that's how I like to play support, I'm simply just going to farm mid. And not only that, I actually genuinely think this is a super good strategy, where instead of me nuking the wave, because you're going to notice I don't nuke it right away, right? I don't nuke it, but I just auto-attack it. I even focus on deny sometimes, because now if someone else on the enemy team would want to farm mid, such as the Zeus, you're going to know shifts over now, if we see him coming over. If I pushed a lane, he would have had a quick wave to shove, would have pushed him towards his level 10, which is actually massive for him, correct? But instead, I hold the lane back simply by not shoving it. Now, as a support, right, like, I, I don't need to shove the wave yet. I'm not looking to make any play. I'm simply looking to farm. And this might seem really greedy, but, you know, my, once again, like, it's not really holding my team back, as you can see. We got the Pugna kill early on and, you know, opened up him taking the tower, so we gave some impact there. But in general, like, I could have just kept farming mid. In fact, I make this awful rotation, and this is what I think you want to avoid. In fact, like, you're like, okay, speed. You're actually so bad, and I agree, yeah, this is awful, but I just want to show you this because strictly, if you try to make these plays when you're weak or show up to poor fights, right, or just like not make coordinated smoke ganks, what ends up happening is it's just a lot of 50-50s when you're not actually certain what the outcome will be. Don't make things so uncertain. That's why I think farming is the way to go up in MMR, even as a support, and it's why I prefer playing Lina or Leshrac over something like a, you know, Chen or Undying. Now, once again here, it's really simple. Uh, my Pugna is rotating. He's doing the fighting now. I, you know, I did a bit of the fighting early game, took, tanked some of the deaths for the boys, and now I'm just pushing up mid, right? At this point, uh, I, d I decide I kind of want to have the option to move around if needed, as I am level 8, so I push out the wave a bit. But you notice, like, I'm constantly playing the waves very aggressively. Not only that, I even try to take, you know, this jungle camp. But really pushing in waves, I even kill that range creep to really amp up my farm. And you notice now I have around 40 CS, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. And we once again now set up for this void kill. And this is like the beginning of making plays as a support. Did you see that sequence, guys? I'm going to go back to that because that is brutally important. Like, unbelievably important, what I just did. I'm not sitting behind my heroes, making myself predictable, right? Why did I catch this void off guard? Right? It wasn't by chance. I push in mid, and look how aggressive I am. 13 minutes in, I'm a pause 5 hero. And I'm pushing in mid. I even kill the range creep to hopefully shove the lane later on. Right, that will push the lane next time they meet. And now, due to my aggressive positioning, then I can wrap behind and catch this void off guard. Right, he has no idea that I'm here. I mean, he might, he probably should, assuming you know I push in a wave. But it's solo queue, communication is low, and that's just how it goes. Right, so that's so abusable, and it's why playing aggressive like that as a support actually sets up ganks more reliably than sitting behind your carry. And once again, my pugna's pushing bottom. I ping him out. I'm like, get back, bro. I don't think we should push a tier 2, so I make a quick call, and what do you know? Very, very simple. I go back mid, harass the AM a bit, you know, make his life a bit miserable, and, you know, now he's low HP and can't farm as much. So once again, this is like indirect impact coming in. He's going to take this fight and actually got a regen room, which is unfortunate, but hopefully you can see the general point, right? I really prioritize any time a fight breaks down or I have some downtime like I'm respawning I look for an open wave now after I push in that wave I have no problem shifting over to a fight as I think I feed here yeah I have no problem shifting over to a fight it's really not an issue I do both I'm three and five right I'm not afk farming like I, I know I say like uh, I've said in the past you can afk farm on supports I do kind of believe that right I, I do but you don't have to do that if you're a guy who likes to fight you can do both, right? You know, you notice here, I'm dead. And being dead is literally the time when I make my best plays. I'm pretty confident of that. So here, we don't actually end up killing him. But it allows me to push in top. And now, my Mars, you know, like, well, Mars isn't farming it. I don't know. It didn't look like he wanted to farm it anyway. He was clearly hunting. So, you know, I have no problem taking the farm. No problem at all. And now, 
At the 16 minute mark is a pause 5, I've bought all the wars and have my aether lens. Have I shut down my teammates? Right, have I taken the farm that they wanted? Besides this potentially one way from the Mars? No! No! I simply take the farm that the Pugna didn't want, and that was about it. And now once again, what happens? Look at the pattern! Look at the pattern! I push in top aggressively, and then I shift to another lane, and due to my aggressive lane shoving, I can naturally be on their side of the map, quickly ready to make a play. Right? I go from the tier 2 top instantly to this mid fight, saving my Pugna. So whenever I push in a top wave, I want to be looking mid, but not necessarily bottom, because I don't want to have to commit TP the majority of the time, but I want to look to run to a fight. Once again, I run for top, protect my Pugna mid, get that kill on the Anti-Mage, and this is just really good sequencing, right? I think it makes a lot of sense, and you'll see how smooth it is. If you watch a lot of support games, what you'll notice is there's almost a lot of unclear feelings about what they should be doing. They're walking around a lot, they're AFK a lot, they're just standing around, and that's what you want to avoid, and that's why picking these shove heroes and shoving lanes allows you to get high net worth, as if we look at me here, I'm 4.9 above the offlane void, you know, it's a bit close, but I'm above their offlaner and nearly above the AM. You could be like, well, your team's crushing. And yes, that is fair. This happened to be a good game. I'm not going to know that. It was a good game, but you can apply all these same concepts even in a hard game. It does not go away. Nothing changes. It's the same game. It just might be a little bit more dangerous to shove waves, right? But you can still do it. Trust me. So you notice here, if we look at the map, what is missing? And that is one of my heroes top. Now, we also see the Animage top, and I would love to pressure him, which we see here, so I sort of chase him a bit, but once again, I notice there's no one top, so as the lane-shoving Lena that I am, I eventually make my way back top, right? And this is the pattern. I look to help with the kills on the AM. I messed up a bit, but I look to help with the kills on the AM, and then when things break down, or there's nothing left to do, or I'm dead, and I don't see any fight breaking out, I push in a lane. But once again, I shove in top. Instantly after shoving in top, I show up to the fight. Do you have to set anything up? That's the question. Do you have to set up fights? As a pause 5, usually not. Because if you try to, you just walk in and instant die. And for all you pause 5s, I think you could probably attest to this, where very often, in games, you try to initiate, you try to start fights, and you're always the first one to die. Try to avoid being the first one to die by shoving lanes and showing up late. That is, it really works. And hopefully these patterns kind of show you that. These, you know, different patterns of, you know, not just walking with your team and you know, walking down lane, like straight up down lanes, but really making these rap plays. And you notice now I shove the AM out of lane. And what does this do? Two things. Actually, I want to go back. But I'm chasing this AM a bit. And this does two things, me chasing him to bottom. Not only does it, you know, force this like atrocious TP from him but it brings me right to the wave, right? It's that simple. Now I go for this kill and I'm pressuring him out and it does two things. It brings me to the wave and it runs out their late game security. These games go late. They have a Zeus, Shaman, Grimstroke void. They can stall. Like if the game went hard, they could stall. We do have good high ground siege, not gonna deny that, but they could. And their anti-mage is their win condition later on, clearly based upon this net worth that we're, we, we can look at right now. So me running him out as a pause five is the way to secure this game, right? Prevent them from coming back, correct? I, th I think it makes a lot of sense. He's the security. And once I shove him out of bottom, their overall net worth is just not going to go up at all. It's not. He's the only one who is really farming aggressively. The only thing they're going to get is the occasional lane creeps that shove in. So building up net worth as a support to allow yourself to pressure a carry does a lot more than you think, right? If I don't have those items... Can I run at the Animage? No chance. No chance. So me playing a little bit greedy enables me to even do my job better than, you know, expected. Better than usual. And now this AM even blanks on me. And what do you know? We throw him into the dumpster. See you, kid. Really, I hope you kind of get the overall point. We're going to go a little bit further and talk about the rest of my items. But hopefully you see the general point. It is possible, especially if you learn to pick these pause 5 lane shove heroes, like the Linus, the Leshrax, Nature's Prophet, Grimstroke, even a hero like Shaman or Lion, you can sort of make it work. Really, almost all of them, Wyvern, etc. It is possible to carry and get 100 CS, even by the 23 minute mark. All right, look at the... I'm above our Mars and our Pugna. Am I stealing their farm? No, because look at their mid and their offlaner as well. It's the same thing. And are there supports farming? No, no, no. They're definitely not. So look... 
Clearly, I'm not taking the general farm, and I know we're winning, so that would probably be everyone who doesn't want to admit that this could work. Uh, that'll be your argument against this. So here we see I go bots, and why are these bots really good? Well, it's simple. As I talked about before, what I want to do this game is play away from my team. I really like playing away from my team. That's my goal is this Lena, right? I play away from my team and be able to show up to fights, right? I'm not ignoring them. I just show up late typically. So these bots are fantastic for that. They do ex literally exactly that. They allow me to show up to fights late. And now here, this Grim Stroke overextends, pick up a quick kill on him. And this actually doesn't even end up going well. This is probably the worst engagement for our team. It seems really good here, but uh, we end up getting chrono in our Pugnet eyes, so. Not the best, but in general, that would be the idea of the bots there. But if we go back to the situation coming in from the Grim Stroke, if I did this alone and no one else died, I kill the Grim, I pressure in the Zeus, I kind of get the lanes in, and this would allow my team to, you know, push down mid or top if they wanted to. They do end up showing up and dying, which, you know, is not optimal, but hopefully you see the point. I could solo defend towers and keep the lanes in, and what this prevents them from do is getting a really good split push. Look at the towers. Do you think AM hasn't taken a tier 1 until 24 minutes, or even a shaman? A shaman? Yes, a shaman. Because of chance. No, it's because I'm constantly keeping the lanes in. You know, in addition to my Jug and my Pugna, you know, I'm not saying they're not helping, probably uh, the Mars as well. But primarily, I've been pushing in the lane of the tower that would naturally fall, right? I'm preventing that one from falling in... <laughs> Yikes. But yeah, I'm really doing the job that allows me to prevent them from coming back, right? And that's why our net worth is able to stay this high. In games where people even feel like they're crushing, the max gap that I often will see is like 5 to 6k. As a result of their, them basically relying completely on their carries to carry the net worth, which sounds logical, but it's not really that practical in practice. So hopefully, like just by watching that fight, you could see the pure impact of me having a lot of items, right? All the Yule's usage, my ability to cast stuns from super far away, me having, you know, 14% spell ab, extra light strike array damage, insane movement speed from bots and Yule's. Like, really, having these items allows you to continue fighting just super effectively, and it shows. It really does show. And once again here, you know, you see, like, this is just the importance of items. I pick up a Blink Dagger, and this Blink Dagger allows me to close the gap on the Zeus, and right-click him to death. So yeah, <laughs> it's very important to question mark your enemies. Very, very important. Now we hit another LSA, we're popping off. Probably should have just used my Laguna right away. But we want to taunt the Shaman a bit. We hit him with the gate. <laughs> and that's going to be it, guys. This is really how you get towards the top. You know, I'm not there yet. We do end the game around 15k. And that's because, you know, my natural instinct, literally even though the game is ending, is to shove in the waves. Like, you see, I, I, it's literally just part of my brain. And you want it to be part of your farming pattern, just like part of your natural play. I mean it. Like, it's literally, I wake up and I just think of how I'm going to get to the open wave. Every single morning, I just get out of bed and I'm like, looking out the window, where's the open lane? I'm not kidding. I'm really not kidding. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned a lot about Pause 5 and maybe even will reconsider how you're looking at the game. Now, trust me, this play style takes a lot of practice to get down well without just completely feeding or wasting or stealing your carries last it's in time, right? It is not easy, but if you really focus or really spend the time when you're dead and, and be diligent and look, where are my teammates? Do I need to play with them? And start picking these heroes I can lane shove like Lina and Lesh. I played another game with Leshrac that was exactly like this. Once again, one of the top net worths for my team, and turned a pause 5 into a pause 1. We look at the net worths, I know I was second, but GPM was highest, and that goes to show that Dota is not as straightforward as you think. If you have ideas on Dota, understand that they can be broken. And I understand that as well. I constantly, when I talk to my students, I understand that uh, what I'm saying could be wrong. It's just a question of, you know, maybe who's a little bit less wrong, and which ideas are actually tested. Right, this idea of me playing a farming pause 5 is something I've been doing for years. I played a ton of Nature's Prophet, and even on my competitive teams, I would often be one of the most farmed heroes in the game. It was a meme on our team, like a literal joke, that I would steal all the kills and become farmed. Because that's how I play pause 5. Now you could be like, well, you know, that's not what it's meant to be, and that's gonna not work at a certain level. Okay, but it's really good for MMR. And thanks for watching. Do you want to carry your games but always find yourself stuck in the support role? 
On GameLeap.com, we have the tools you need to take control of your games as a pause 4 and pause 5. With hundreds of guides covering hero specifics and key concepts like ganking and lane control, GameLeap is the place to unlock your potential as a support player. Hit the link on screen right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount and start your journey today.